Need to learn a trick for making self-documenting code and preventing runtime errors? It's time to add phantom types to your arsenal. Hi, this is Ray Fix. Are you part of a community of Swift developers? Then do me a favor and share this video with them. The easiest way to see how phantom types work is with an example. Open the starter playground. Suppose we are making a quiz app with states and capitals. You might have a lookup dictionary like this, where state strings map to capital strings. While this works, it's not a great solution. The name lookup doesn't really describe what is happening. How can we improve things? If we didn't have types working for us, a simple solution would be to give lookup a more verbose name, such as states to capitals. If we were going to use types, we might make a model for state and capital. Using type alias is a quick way of aliasing a type for a bigger concept. This is an improvement. It becomes more clear what this dictionary gives us, no matter what the name is. Oftentimes, it is good enough. Let's write a test. When you run the test, it prints something funny. The capital of Juno is Alaska. This accidentally transposed the state and capital. We can solve this by making types for state and capital. Now we see our compiler error and can fix it. Now at this point, things are good, but you might have noticed a lot of duplication between state and capital. The types are exactly the same form, except distinct, so we don't want to mix them up. And this is where phantom types come in. Let's go ahead and remove capital. We will make state generic and rename it to named. We can then create two types, state tag and capital tag, to statically dispatch with. It is good to use an uninhabited enum because it can't be instantiated. The phantom types are never actually referred to anywhere in named, but have the important job of making distinct types that can't be confused. We have eliminated code duplication and made two distinct types. Phantom types are one approach to making sure you use the right types in the right place. There are other techniques as well, such as using dependent types. These techniques are discussed in greater detail in the course Advanced Swift Types and Operations, now available to raywenderlich.com subscribers. If you would like to see more, head over there and check it out.